According to Jordan Renan of ESPN, he is reporting that the New York Giants have reached out to Evan Neal and his team about making the switch from right tackle to guard. You're watching Giants now by Chat Sports. I'm your host, Marshall Green. Make sure you guys hit that thumbs up icon. We'll break down the report from Jordan Renan where he says, I've also heard the Giants had talks with Evan Neal's team a little about playing left guard this season. You guys have asked me a thousand times on this channel. Marshall, why don't the Giants move the uh, Evan Neal to guard? Marshall, why don't they do it? Why isn't he playing that? Let's try to unpack that in today's show. It, I thought it was very interesting, though, that when Renan reported this on his podcast, check it out, he said that it was about playing left guard. Well, Evan Neal, in 2019 at Alabama, played 723 snaps at left guard. So if there is a guard spot that I am wanting to transition him from, from right tackle to guard, it's the left guard spot. Because he has some work there, he's played there before, and he has plenty of expertise and experience there, at least in the college level. Will that translate to the NFL? Who knows with him as he's been a bust since he has been drafted. Let's take a look at what he did, though, in 2019 at Alabama playing that left guard position. It was his first year in college, 71.2 overall grade by pro football focus, 70.1 when it comes to run blocking, 70.0 pass blocking, only allowed one sack, and he allowed 12 pressures. If you're curious how his pro football focus ranks compare by position, you see what it is at left guard in 2019. At left tackle in 2021, he was an 85.8 overall grade with an 80.4 run blocking grade and an 83.6 pass blocking grade. At 20, in 2020, he played the right tackle position, 83.7 overall grade, 86.4 run blocking, and 73.1 pass blocking. So he's played pretty much every position except for right guard and center at Alabama. I like that he's played there before. Will he be able to be a solid pro? That is the question. My question to you is this. Is it time? Should Joe Shane, Brian Dable, and Carmen Brasillo make the move? Should Evan Neal go from right tackle to left guard? Let me know what you think. Type Y for yes, type N for no. Whether it's at right tackle whether it's at left guard. No matter where he plays on the offensive line, I really don't have all that much faith in Evan Neal to be able to resurrect his career. The things I've just seen on tape through year one and year two, I believe they're correct correctable to a degree. Is he ever going to live up to being the fifth overall pick in the NFL draft? I sure hope so, but my eyes are not lying when they tell me most likely not. But I do like the idea of him playing that left guard position one, because he's done it at Alabama. And two, he would have Big Bro in the best left tackle over his left shoulder right there next to him. Andrew Thomas at left guard. Evan Neal, at, uh, Andrew Thomas at left tackle, excuse me. Evan Neal at left guard. I like that. I like having a really good player right next to you. Helps you out with stunts. Helps you out with different protections. Different type of blitz picks up, pickups. I like that. I still just don't have much confidence in him because, he's, because of what he's put on tape over the last two years. It has not been good. Look at the stats. I mean, it's really, really disappointing. A lot of people at Evan Neal as the number one player entering the draft in 2022 where the Giants took him at number five overall. And he had an extremely disappointing rookie year. A PFF grade of sub-50. Overall, run blocking, pass blocking, flagged seven times, allowed 39 pressures, and gave up seven sacks. I guess you could say maybe he got a little bit better in his sophomore season, but I think that may not even be true because his pro football focus grade went down, run blocking went up, pass blocking went up, pressures and sacks stayed the, stayed the same. And at the time of injury, before he missed the rest of the season, Evan Neal was ranked as the 62nd tackle in the National Football League. There's 32 teams. Two players play tackle at a time. He was one of the worst in the NFL, and that's when he was ranked 57th in his rookie season. On top of the fact that he just hasn't been good, he's only played in 20 or 34 games in two years. Sometimes the best ability is availability. I think Evan need, Neal needs to keep on working on his game, keep on you know, talking with scouts and trying to further elevate the type of player he can be, but he's got to be available. If you're only playing 20 or 34 games, doesn't matter how good you are, you're going to have to look for, for, towards another player to play that position. Availability. Depend ability. Smart, tough, dependable. He didn't sound very smart when he called New York Giants fans burger flippers. Is he tough? He didn't play through an injury. And also dependable. 20 games played. 
out of 34 tries. Some rumors did come out this offseason that Evan Neal was trying to play through injury. You see this person, Scott Harg, on Twitter asking Duke Manyweather, what's up with Evan Neal back on March 9th? And he said he tried to play hurt last year. You're asking, Marshall, who is Duke Manyweather? He is a professional offensive line coach, scout, and trainer. He actually trained Evan Neal as he was preparing for the 2024 NFL Draft. He's worked with almost every single top offensive lineman in this league. Hopefully he's right. And it was just because he was trying to play through injury, that is why he was not able to live up to the hype. And hopefully with OG Bobby Johnson, the worst offensive line coach outside the Giants building now, and not poisoning the prospects of this team, Carmen Brasillo, your new offensive line coach who comes over from the Las Vegas Raiders, can help build back up Evan Neal, I would say, confidence-wise, but also technique-wise. Because I think that's slipped as the years have gone on since leaving Alabama. Hopefully, Carmen Brasillo can get the number five pick overall, uh, overall number five pick back on track. The Giants, they need Evan Neal to be good. And this is probably his last chance to prove it. If not, he may just be cut by this time next year. Make sure you are subscribed to the channel. We're going to continue to put out free, informative, entertaining content every day on your New York football Giants. So subscribe and turn your notifications on so you never miss a thing. Coming up next, Jordan Renan on his podcast also mentioned that Evan Neal is still going to be the starting right tackle. I want to talk about that. I have some thoughts on it, and I'll share my opinion on if I think it will happen or he will be the starting right tackle for the foreseeable future. But first, Brian Burns' New York Giants jerseys are on sale. They are flying off the charts. Get yours today, chatsports.com slash burns. That's chatsports.com slash burns. Get your Brian Burns jersey, the new face of the New York Giants on defense, one of the best pass rushers in the league, just 25 years old, sign a five-year deal. If there's a player's jersey you're going to buy, it's either got to be Burns, Andrew Thomas, or Dexter Lawrence. They're at least the only players I'm confident are going to be here for a while. He's wearing number zero. It's not official. Once it is, your jersey with the number zero on it will be shipped your way. That link will be clickable in the comments and description. Jordan Renan also said this. Evan Neal, from what I understand, is the right tackle only until he's not the right tackle. What does that tell me? Evan Neal is going to get the first crack in camp, in preseason, and in the regular season to prove to the team, prove to Karma Brasillo, Brian Dable, Mike Kafka, Joe Shane, but most po importantly, prove it to himself that he could still do it. I felt like he lacked confidence the last couple of years, and when you play sports at this high of a level, if you don't believe in yourself, you're going to question everything, and you go from reacting and playing the way that you've grown to play throughout your entire career to overthinking, and I thought Evan Neal got in trouble because of that. So let's go with what Renan said. He's going to be the right tackle until he's not the right tackle. So this is what I think the projected starting offensive line would look like. You got the big guy, the big fella, number 78, Andrew Thomas, holding down the blind side of whoever is under center for the Giants. I think he's one of the best in the business. They need him to be healthy next year. John Runyon, three years, $30 million, comes over from the Green Bay Packers. He was asked in his introductory press conference with the Giants, does he prefer left guard or right guard? And he said left guard. So I'm going to put him there. And he got second round pick, John Michael Schmitz, back at center. The other free agency signing, two years, $14 million, Jermaine Illuminor at right guard, and Evan Neal at right tackle. If Evan Neal starts off slow this year, looks bad in camp, or struggles at all, he is going to be out of the starting lineup at the right tackle position. His leeway and his leash is not going to be long this year. You know why? Because Brian Dable doesn't want to be fired because Evan Neal was up at right tackle allowing 25 sacks this year. And neither does Joe Shane or Carmen Brasillo or Mike Kafka. Because if they fire Joe Shane or Brian Dable, all those people will be looking for new jobs. It's make or break time for Evan Neal. You're entering year three. You were the fifth overall pick. A lot of people got you as the no or six, uh, seventh overall pick, excuse me. I think I said fifth a couple times in this video. Seventh overall pick. I apologize. Um, Kayvon went fifth. I mixed that up. But it's time. Whether he's fifth or seventh, it doesn't freaking matter. It's time. It's year three. You were a top 10 pick. You haven't lived up to the hype. And why is it so important now? The Giants have invested in your replacements. They went out and paid John Runyon, who could slide to right tackle. But the guy that it's going to be if he messes up is going to be Jermaine Illuminor. Illuminor has played all over the offensive line in his career. And he had his best two seasons in the National Football League under Carmen Brasillo with the Las Vegas Raiders. This past year, PFF ranked him as, I believe, 
uh, the 30th best right tackle in the NFL, 68.4 overall PFF grade, 64.4 pass blocking grade, and 71.5 run blocking rate. You might say, well, Marshall, you just had him as a starting right guard. Well, he could do that, and he could also do some of this. He plays everywhere. He's done his entire career. 420-plus snaps at left tackle. Over 11 snaps, not a lot, at left guard. 534, though, at right guard, and 1,861 at right tackle. Last year, he was the right tackle um, for the Las Vegas Raiders. He'll start as the starting right guard here. If Evan Neal struggles, though, they're going to move him out to right tackle. So this is what I think the projected starting offensive line will look like. I want to go to the Giants offensive line depth chart next to show the depth on this team. It's going to be Thomas. It's going to be Runyon. It's going to be John Michael Schmitz. Right guard and right tackle will be a little bit of a question mark. So this is what I think the full offensive line, uh, this is what the full offensive line looks like at the moment. And this is what I think the starters will look like. But let's say Neil struggles. You're going to bounce Illuminor out to right tackle. And then you can go with Josh Azudu, Marcus McKeithen, Aaron Stenny, who you just signed from the, uh, you just signed. Also Austin Schlotman, who you just signed. Those guys are veterans. Those guys are proven. Those guys know what they're going to get when they put them out there. I don't know if we know that with Evan Neal. What's your confidence level in the Giants O-line? They signed two starting guards, and they signed two backup guards. What's your confidence level? Scale it. One to ten for me down in the comment section. Make sure you are following me over on Twitter and Instagram. I'm tweeting about the Giants all day, every day, as well as posting about them on Instagram. So hit me up over there. Make sure to thumbs up icon, and let's go Big Blue.